Welcome to Turn the Page, the official podcast of the Syosset Public Library. Welcome to Turn the Page podcast, Syosset Library's podcast. Uh, This is Jessica, and I am here with Hi, I'm Laura Griffin, and I am an author. I live in Austin, Texas. You are. Actually, I have family and friends in Austin, so that's very exciting uh, to uh, be visiting one of their neighbors virtually. Um, So uh, that's my shout out to them. Um, So this book is, um, how? what number is this in your um, Texas Murder Files series? This is book three in the series. And it's like, so this book, Midnight Dunes, uh, it's the series itself, it follows different characters within the same area, correct? That's right. So the the series is called The Texas Murder Files, and each story focuses on a different murder mystery in Texas. Um, But it kind of jumps around geographically. The first book in the series called Hidden was set in Austin, which is my hometown. Um, And then The second book, Flight, moved down to the coast of Texas, and it's set on an island called Lost Beach. And for book three, which is Midnight Dunes, we're returning to Lost Beach for this story. I love this whole thing. You're doing it, and a few other uh, authors are doing it now, where a series is almost like they're companions to one another. So you can jump in at different times um, and you enjoy a book and then go back and enjoy yeah. a previous book, but not feel like you missed that much. Maybe you, you sprinkle enough in the subsequent series to keep people interested uh, and have them want to go back, but you can really start anywhere. And I love it. I love that too in series, because actually I, when I used to read a lot of books from the library, I would go to the library every week with my kids and we would check out books And when I would be reading a series, I was always so frustrated when I would go to the library and the next book in the series order was not available because somebody else had checked it out. So when I started writing fiction, I wanted to make sure that in the series of books, you could pick up one any place in the series and understand the plot um, without having to have read all the ones before. So you can kind of jump around and each book in the series has its own kind of standalone suspense plot. And the characters overlap, but each of the books focuses on a different couple. And so they're kind of self-contained in that way. So this is the story of Macy and Owen, Owen, who'd been in a previous book. Um, And Macy is formerly a reporter who is now no longer a reporter and um, is tasked with doing Uh, sort of like tourist films for this area that she's staying in and then it's not a shocker or a spoiler to say that the (laughs) dead body is involved and that's right um, yeah things get crazy from there yeah she starts out and um she's she's got a background in filmmaking and she takes a job at a tv station and ends up um doing some work um as a television reporter, Um, but then there's a scandal and her career gets derailed. And so she goes to Lost Beach kind of looking to hit reset on everything in her life. And so um, she's making, um, you know, some tourism films to try and help promote the the island and the tourism industry there. And that's when kind of all the, the murder kind of unfolds and she gets kind of swept into the investigation as a witness. And she is staying at, I guess, what the equivalent of uh, an Airbnb would be or a rental property. But, yeah, uh, it wasn't always a rental property. That's right. It's um, it's a she's staying at this beach cottage and it's kind of dilapidated. You know, of course, it doesn't live up to its online, uh, you know, billing as, as this cozy, romantic, you know, paradise. But she she's making the best of it. She's cleaning. And as she's kind of settling in and unpacking, she starts to notice these details that that she kind of puts things together one at a time and realizes that there this this place that she's moved into might have been a crime scene. 
And so she starts to understand that there's kind of more going on than she first thought at this, at this cozy little cabin that she rented. I love that her biggest peeve when she realizes that this cabin is not what she thought it was going to be is that there was no coffee maker. That is, <laughs> in my opinion, the absolute worst. Yes. Every If you are thinking of starting an Airbnb or if you have an Airbnb or a rental property and you are going to rent and you do not have a coffee maker, be it a Keurig or a regular, I am telling you, go out and get one now because I read this. and I was like, oh, come on. Yeah. And, and it's just, you know, she's had a really bad night the night before, you know, one thing after another kind of has happened as she's kind of arriving. And so it's just like, she just wakes up to this calamity, <laughs> no coffee. <laughs> and it kind of get it kind of sets the tone for the day that's going to follow for her. So where did the idea for this story come from? Well, the idea for the setting, the setting is actually inspired by uh, a real place in Texas. There's a, there's a part of Texas on the, on the coast and it's called North Padre Island. And there's this place called Padre Island National Seashore. And it's this beautiful um, strip of, it's a barrier island and there's these beautiful white sand dunes and you can camp there and it's, it's just beautiful. And it's a nature reserve with lots of birds and, you know, um, beautiful kind of unspoiled coastline. So the, the, the setting was kind of inspired by a camping trip I went on years ago at this beautiful spot. But the story kind of was inspired um, when I moved to Austin. Um, my husband and I moved into this little bungalow house, little tiny house, and it, we had bought it from the estate of this 83-year-old lady, and she died, and she left it to her church. And she had never married or had any children, so she left this house to her church and she'd lived in there since the 1940s and so I climbed up on a ladder and we were repainting this bedroom and I'm climbing I've climbed up on this ladder in the closet and I discovered all these old postcards from this road trip she had taken in the 1960s and I just started reading these postcards and just realizing about you know she had these love affairs and just just the things from her past that I found just kind of you know being in a closet in this house and I started to just think about how how interesting it is that this this house could have these secrets that you just you know kind of happen to stumble upon, and so I kind of gave that whole idea kind of a, a creepy twist for a murder mystery. It, what if you moved into a house and you started finding clues that a crime had happened there? And so that's what happens to Macy in the story. She moves into this house. She's settling in. She's unpacking. She's cleaning. And one by one, she starts to find these clues that she thinks a, something terrible happened at this in this house. And so that kind of sets the tone for the, the murder mystery that unfolds. There's also some really nice steamy romance. This is a really good beach read. And the sparks between Owen and Macy are like scorching. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> um I just had so much fun reading about the two of them. When you were going to have Owen sort of take center stage or at least be part of a couple in this particular um, uh, book, uh, how did you want to sort of um, flesh him out a bit versus uh, his previous smaller appearances? Yeah, in the, he appeared in flight as Joel's brother. So he and his brother both work on this small town police force in Lost Beach. So his brother is kind of the older brother. He's kind of one of these kind of dominating personalities. He's just kind of good at everything he does. He's a natural leader. He was kind of born to be, you know, the senior detective. You know, he was just kind of born into that role and he just has embraced it. Owen is not so sure. Owen is the younger brother. He's kind of he's kind of on this career path, but he's not sure if it's a right fit for him. And so there's there's definitely some sibling rivalry in the story. But um, th these brothers, you know, they love each other and they're tight and they they have a tight family. But there's definitely some undercurrents of tension between them. And so um, Owen 
in the previous book, we saw how he felt a little bit overshadowed by his brother. And that kind of continues into this story. And so part of the story is about him kind of finding his own way and kind of um, finding his own identity in his, in his role um, as on the police force as a detective, even though he um, kind of is in his brother's shadow a little bit, he kind of, he kind of finds his own way and, and has to kind of grapple with whether or not this is the right fit for him, this career in law enforcement. And so that's something that he actually works with Macy to kind of, kind of get to the heart of that. So. Yeah, I really loved it. And uh, I'm just sort of looking at your accolades. First of all, it's very cool to me because uh, people love your books. And as I was approaching the date of this interview, everywhere I went, somebody had one of your books on their desk. And I'm not talking about even in a library. Yeah, like if I was going, you know, to like, the post office, like you could see kind of in the background, I guess somebody was taking their break and reading one of your books. Or um, if I had to stop off at a doctor's office, another Laura Griffin book was on somebody's desk. So it was almost like you were uh, virtually like- That's wonderful. Me. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, but like looking, so you've written a lot of books. You've written more than 25 books and novellas and you've um, won, uh, you're a two-time winner of the Rita Award, but you're also the recipient of the Daphne du Maurier Award, which is the coolest thing because I love Daphne du Maurier. Me too. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. And I'm that the Daphne Award came for um, a book called Untraceable, which is the first book in my Tracer series, which is a long running series. Um, that series has 13 books and that that one's also set in Texas. And that series is fun because it combines um, a, a lot of focus on forensics, which I love. Um, so the this it's all these different stories and all these different characters, but what unites them is that they work at this crime lab in, in central Texas called the Delphi Center. And they kind of do all the most cutting edge forensic techniques to help detectives solve crimes. And so each different book in that series focuses on a different um, kind of forensic specialty or a, you know a forensic expert who knows how to do something interesting like a forensic anthropologist or maybe a DNA expert who does kind of genealogy research to help solve crimes or maybe it's a, a fingerprint expert who's an expert in lifting fingerprints off of anything and so that's been fun because I love um, forensic science and I love to kind of weave some of those details into the stories so um, and I continue to do that even though I'm not writing the Texas the Tracer series anymore, I kind of always tend to weave forensic details into the stories because I love to learn about that. So do you like to read within your own genre or are you like somebody who basically reads anything or is there like um, a genre that people might not necessarily attribute to you that you enjoy? Oh, I love all genres of fiction. I, I read, um, I do read romantic suspense and romantic thrillers. I love straight mysteries, but I also love, you know, historical fiction and um, historical romances. Um, I was on a Bridgerton kick last summer and I read all the Bridgerton books. And Why so I kind of just read a, on a, a wide variety. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I love all it. Of us. And, you know, a lot of my friends write all different kinds of fiction. So I'm constantly reading something that came out by a friend. And so it might be a genre that's completely different from what I'm writing, but I love to just read a variety. And then I also read um, a lot of nonfiction as I'm kind of researching a story. So depending what I'm researching, um, I just finished a book and it features a search and rescue dog. And um, he and his handler work out in kind of the West Texas area, kind of near Big Bend National Park. And so I did all this research about search, search and rescue dogs. And that was just fascinating to learn about all the training that goes into their work and you know how, how they do what they do. Um, so just depending on what I'm writing about, I'll be reading different kinds of nonfiction. How much research did you really um, need to do for this book? Um, I know I was reading that you like photography, but I know that filmmaking is a bit different. That's right. You know, this book, um, the, the setting, I basically just researched by going there myself because I've, I've been camping in Padre Island National Seashore area and 
you know, been to South Padre Island and North Padre Island, and it's just this amazing place and it has all this local color. Um, and so that's kind of just, that's a fun type of research because you just get to go see a place and kind of absorb it and try and find places to weave in some of the details. Um, but then for the, um, more for the character of Macy, who has a background in film. Um, I did an online class with um, documentary filmmaker, Ken Burns, um, who's an award-winning filmmaker. And he just, oh, yes. he taught this amazing online class. Um, and so I, I was inspired by him. And so I named the character, her last name is Burns. Macy Burns is the character. I just kind of wanted to kind of have that little shout out to him in the story, but um yeah, so whenever I'm, you know, researching a new character, I like to learn about what they do and their job and, you know, how they spend their time and kind of what are some of the ups and downs of someone in that profession so that I can kind of have a better grasp of, of what they're up against and what kind of things they deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, as um, somebody who is definitely a northerner um, and I visited Texas a few times, but it was really like events. So you have this big whirlwind weekend. Yeah. snakes how many snakes are oh my you run into on a daily basis down oh there? my gosh just every time it's you so funny that you should ask this because i was just we had some friends over for dinner last night and we were talking about snakes because they had just found a uh, a rat snake and a king snake in their yard they live on a piece of property it's kind of a more of a rural area we get a lot of snakes in texas we have rattlesnakes um we have you know water moccasins, all that, copperheads. We have a lot of venomous snakes, but, um, you know, I can't say that they, they cross my path very often. You know, I live in Austin, <laughs> so it's, a, it's an urban setting. You don't see them everywhere, right. but they definitely, um, are around. You have to be careful. Man. Yeah. I don't know that we see that many snakes, um, at least in my area of New York. However, um, there are there are times. I mean, I, I recall uh, having a very large gar garden, garden, gardener snake on a bush once outside my house, and then you know just seeing smaller snakes. But yeah, whenever uh, I, I read about you know like a rural area in Texas, yeah. which is like places where there's so many of them, um, I'm just like, oh my god, I don't you know I I feel so naive about the prominence <laughs> of snakes. Yeah, it's definitely something to watch out for. It, I do a lot of hiking in the hill country area because that's Austin's kind of nestled into the hill country region of Texas. And uh, you have to be careful. You know, it's a good idea to wear boots and stuff like that and just kind of keep your eyes peeled because they are definitely around. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, is there going to be another book in the Texas murder mystery series? Yes, actually, I'm writing it now. Um, the next book is going to be focused on Layla, who is the sister um, of Owen. And she makes an appearance in the story Midnight Dunes, but she's going to kind of have her own book and her own story in the next, in the next uh, book in the series. Thank you so much. This was great. Um, Thank I, you. Sorry I asked so much about snakes. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are there they are not like the lead character in the story i think the story is um it's hot it is suspenseful it is a good beach read i think people are gonna love it and i can't wait to see it on everybody's desk because i know that's what's gonna happen thank you so much it's great to talk to you you too come back for the next one and um we are going to close this chapter of turn the page it's time to close this chapter of turn the page Join us for the next episode.